uh, well, actually, let me call the January 12th, 530 select board meeting to order facilities master plan workshop part two. As a preliminary matter, I'm Don Holgate, Chair of the Nantucket Select Board. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. I'll go through the board members first. Jason Bridges. Here. Matt Fee. Here. Um, on staff members, Erica Mooney. Here. Janet Schulte. Here. Brian Turbot. In attendance. Libby Gibson. Present. Rick Sears. Here. Thanks. Um, Greg Tibnan. Present. Rachel Day. Here. Stephen Murphy. Here. Um, we also have Denise Crono. With Here. us this evening. Um, Mary Longacre. Good evening. Um, also from the town, Rob McNeil. Here. Mark Boyd. Here. Hi, Mark. Thanks. Um, and then we have um, Julia Novak from the Novak Group and Catherine Carter. Here. And that's everyone so far. Some more will be joining us. This open meeting of the select board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order supersedes the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature um, public comment if someone wants to log in and raise their hand. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that portion of the script um, and turn it over to Julia. Okay, well, thank you. Um, we're going to share our screen um, and to kind of walk the board through this, but I wanted to give um, Libby an opportunity to make some introductory and opening remarks this evening. Great. Thank you, Julia. So as the board will recall, uh, your current um, almost ready to be a ready to be updated strategic plan contains a focus area called the Fishing Town Operations and goal number one under that focus area is to develop a municipal facilities master plan. So we started with a we were actually going to have a workshop on this just about a year ago and then in fact, we, we had an item on your agenda just about a year ago, but it was close to the end of a very long meeting and it was then agreed that it would be a workshop meeting. COVID hit and everything fell apart and we took it back up again on November 17th with a workshop um, that, facility, that Julia facilitated for you. And out of that came the idea to have a second and potentially even a third workshop because this is, this is a pretty huge, area that this plan covers a lot of municipal facilities. So we agreed to have a second workshop to further discuss the municipal, municipal facilities associated with certain public services, amenities, employee housing, and potentially other facilities that we haven't thought of that the board might want us to consider. There are other town plans either pending or in place now that may impact some of the facilities that we discussed tonight, including the coastal resiliency plan, the hazard mitigation plan, the park and recreation master plan, and, and some others. So we will, we, we will ultimately wanna make sure that nothing in those plans will contradict this and vice versa. One of the hoped for outcomes of this workshop is to determine how to best incorporate community involvement with facility planning. And Julia, I think that covers most of what we 
talked about. Yeah, no, thanks, Libby. I think that's really helpful. You know, the, just the context of this work, you know, with November 17th, we really talked about town offices and how we're going to, um, uh, how you want to organize that. And the board provided some great direction. I was very, and there was great consensus around it. So tonight, we're focusing on these other types of town facilities. And um, my colleague, Catherine Carter, is going to share her screen so we can kind of walk you through the questions that we want you to consider um, and then kind of get your direction on. I, I know I, I gave you all a little bit of homework, um, but it's not the kind of homework that if you haven't done it already, you're not too far behind because we really are just interested in hearing your thoughts and opinions about this, um, these types of facilities and, and the direction that you want to see the town go. So next slide. So there's a series of questions that we want you to consider, and we're going to invite each of the board members to share um, kind of your perspective on these questions in the categories of public services and the different types of amenities and employee housing. So what new amenities is the community looking to the town to build? Um, and I think a couple of you in comments have already mentioned the importance of kind of listening to the community and what's the expectation there in terms of what the community wants and then what, what is the town in the position to provide and meet those expectations? Um, where, where do you want those public, um, where does the public want those facilities to be and how do they want them to be used? We need you to take into consideration things like parking, access to public transportation um, and bike paths, ADA and code compliance, ensuring energy efficiency. Um, Libby already mentioned coastal resilience and sea level rise and how those plans might ultimately impact. And then there's the concept of renting versus purchasing versus, you know, kind of your own O&M piece. So go ahead to the next slide just to give them a preview of what we're going to do. Yeah. So I, what I'm going to leave this slide up and hope that you all have the memo in front of you with the questions. The questions are on page two of the memo. Um, and then we use this slide as just kind of a holding point for each of you to share your perspectives um, um, on, in the categories. So, and you can do all the categories at once. We're gonna be taking notes kind of in the background, um, address by address as you mentioned them. And so at the end of this, we'll be able to go through each type of facility and the different addresses that we've shared with you in the memo and kind of see where the board is on each of them. Does that make sense in terms of an approach for this evening? Can you all feel prepared? Okay, great. Um, I see Christy joined us. Hi, Christy. Um, so who would like to begin this evening for the, of the board members? You're all so polite. Matt, you ready? Matt said- uh, I'm not, but I'll do it. Okay, Matt, Matt sent some things just before the meeting started. Yeah, no, I, my, I'm just gonna go through. I made some just notes just from the questions that were in. I didn't answer everything, but uh, you know, some of this is repetitive from our last uh, session. I think the Island Home should be at Sherbin Commons and the Senior Center should be, uh, dead, you know, should be at the Island Home site and renovated uh, concessions. I think are fine as they are now uh, with potentially one addition at Tom Nevers when that's warranted. I think that would be a great place to do it. Uh, we should stick to the initial intents of those concessions. They, you know, with their, if they're, if they've already like expanded now, great, but we shouldn't be encouraging more drinking and more, you know, more of that stuff on town land. I mean, it's happening down at the beach, but you know, I think if we want a hot dog stand, you have to have it as a hot dog stand. So I think it's important to keep it, you know, at the initial intent and not have creeping uh, commercialism as has happened at some of them over the years. Uh, potential for concessions, like I said, maybe at Tom Nevers, you know, once that's fixed, maybe there's a place there that we could carve out a space and, you know, have another, uh, you know, another concession, another restaurant or, you know, another place for regular people to go with a beautiful view and a central location in Tom Nevers. That's a you know long term. That's a 15 year out. Under employee housing, uh, 
I think the town needs to take care of its own employees first, uh, you know, for, you know, and look at it that way scattered for sort of the senior positions like we do now, I think scattered when it's appropriate. Uh, I don't think we should be removing dwellings for parking lots. I think that dwellings are important as dwellings. Uh, we need them for housing. We need the housing units. We don't have a transportation plan and we don't, you know, we can't get people if we don't, can't house them. That's been my, you know, that's how I've run my business for years. The town needs to get there. Uh, we should centralize the seasonal at Fairgrounds Road, I think, and, and, and we should develop that property and mix in other units on that site. Uh, we should house our own employees first. Uh, just a, something I thought about when we're coming, especially with what we've seen everywhere, is we've got to be careful. We have housing for our first responders. We can't have our first responders living off island. You know, public safety, we need them to live on Nantucket. If we have a serious situation here they, they, and they can't get on the boat and get back here, we've made a mistake. So I think we really have to be something that they would be happy, you know, a great place for them to live, give them an opportunity to live here at least in their young years until they can afford a house or they get married or do something else. I think the old fire station on Pleasant Street should be uh, a dense housing project with possibly commercial or meeting on the first floor. Uh, then I'm answering the question, what new amenities is the community looking to build? The ones I've heard is a senior center, playing fields expansion, a concession at the Delta, you know, at the playing fields across from Delta. Uh, people want Tom Nevers improved, which we're planning on doing. And the other one that we brought up in session one was uh, a black box theater. Uh, Dreamland could get it built, uh, but they need land. You know, maybe it's through uh, through the town. Maybe it's through some of the other schools that are already out there and they could use it with them with overflow parking into lots that are already existing on Nobody at Farm Road. But something like that might be an easy, good thing to do. Uh, on the issue of parking, we should build housing near services to be less car dependent. And we shouldn't be afraid of leases that forbid, forbid a vehicle. If we've got dense housing, you know, or we should charge for those, those vehicle spaces. Uh, if we have dense housing that's right next to stop and shop, there's no reason to have a vehicle. If you work at the town building and you, you know, you've got everything you need right there, you know? So I think we, you know, we can't build for the car or we're not gonna have any place to build. Uh, yes, we should design green. There should be solar on all self-facing roofs, you know, and that includes the existing buildings. We should be looking at it. It's the payback is very short. I'm, I'm doing it myself. It's amazing. Uh, and we should be building them energy efficiently, which I think we will. Coastal resiliency is a key. We shouldn't invest in areas prone to flooding or storm surge. There are some areas that you wouldn't think are gonna be impacted there, but they are next to ponds and they're in wetlands that are going to expand as this happens. So we really have to be careful. Everyone thinks it's just along the coast, but it's gonna be, you know, the head of uh, Maya Comet Pond and it's gonna be near hatches. There's a lot of places that are gonna be issues. Uh, the town housing, like who does it? It can be through Housing Nantucket or Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Habitat could help us. They should be giving consideration to the town if the town has given them land. You know, we should be, they should be giving consideration in rentals or potentially putting town employees at the top of the list or on the top of the pile when we're doing it, if we're giving them the land. I think from the, I look at the housing is we need a bifurcated market. We can't count on the market to solve our issues. We're going to have to, if we want to have a year round community, we need to have uh, two markets. It needs to be a market for year round and affordable and for year round people and then for everybody else. And that's going to take a lot of, you know, and it happens in some communities. I've done it in Aspen, Colorado. They don't look for 10% of their, uh, of, of their year round stock. Like we are, we're supposed to do. They look for 10, they look for 40% of all their housing stock. And so we've got to have a big vision like that, or we're going to continue to be behind. We're going to be like a gerbil in a cage, running in a cage and never catching up. Uh, you know, I think we have to accept that the housing office will be developing and maintaining and include space for those functions in our facility planning. I don't think, you know, 
so that's just, I think we have to sort of bite the bullet and say the housing office over the next 10, 15, 20 years is going to become more than one person. It's gonna to have to be a function of the town. Uh, any chance we have, we should work with the land bank and carve out housing where appropriate before they turn it into, you know, before they give up that land, we should make sure we have that sort of uh, relationship and areas that we're trading with them. If there are edges of those areas that should be housing because they're right next to houses, we have to make sure that the town does that for employee town housing. And then there are <coughs> existing buildable lots like Silver Street Park, you know, the Silver Street is a perfect example that could be two, that could be row houses and house quite a few people. I, and we have to be thinking about that. We can't just keep our, some of our best, most simple uh, properties as uh, parking lots. They can be much better utilized if, with people uh, living there. So there's my quick synopsis. Okay. Um, anybody have questions for Matt before we go on to another member of the board? Again, we are we are taking notes, and I have shared our PowerPoint with Erica as of right now at her request. All right, who'd like to go next? could do alphabetical order. I can flip a coin. Christy, do you feel ready? Yeah, I can go next. All right, we're doing opposite alphabetical order. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think Matt touched on a lot of the things that we've been talking about and kind of was talked about in the first session um, in terms of kind of what we think the public is looking for. I think that's something that we need to do a little bit more research on and kind of um, have a more public discussion. Um, I just came from the housing production plan in which we had a webinar with, I think, a bit, a bit over 50 people participated and gave a lot of really helpful feedback as to what they wanna see as the future of housing on Nantucket. So I think something like that would be helpful to have for this. Um, I think, you know, all of us have had a lot of input on the Island Home and our senior center. So I think that's definitely one that we know is something that we wanna see move forward. But I think there's other things that the community might want that we haven't heard directly about. Um, in terms of concession buildings, I think Again, Matt kind of touched on it. I think what we have is good building things that aren't maybe necessarily reliant on food and alcohol. Um, I liked the idea of the theater or, you know, some other outdoor um, stage so you could have outdoor um, plays and things like that, things that can bring the community together post COVID um, without necessarily having the sales of food and alcohol. Um, Trying to open up, see the questions at the same time. What else do we need to touch on? Um, so I know you mentioned the senior center and our island home. Did you have a location for our island home? I think it's a good discussion to see how it can be at Sherburn Commons. And you know, if it was moved, I think the senior center would be a good spot to be right there. Um, on the water, or if it was possible to have both in that area. I don't know if there's any plans with the landmark or if that would be moved at any time, um, but that could be another option as well. Okay, thank you. So the other, the other category then, you, did you talk, uh, what about employee housing? Um, I don't have any other thoughts on employee housing other than it's something that we need to be focusing on. Um, no, I like the idea of trying to build our, or at least purchase um, employee housing close to the um, town offices. So I know in our first session, we talked about, you know, how do we consolidate more things maybe near 2FG and then what type of housing could we build in that area so that things are close by to where they're working and living. 
um, it, so just uh, kind of the, the questions, do, are there any other amenities that you hear the community looking to the town to build? I haven't heard of anything else. Okay, just the senior center playing fields. You mentioned the black box. Um, and running by these others, I guess. I don't think there's anything, anything else specific then. Thank you, Christy. You're welcome. Her, by anybody else? All right, Jason, you're up. I was not going to raise my hand. The two the two men were not going to go first. So I'm, I'm just going to sit here and wait. You're always very <laughs> sensitive to that. Um, well, I can kind of just try to give some consensus on things that were already said. So you know what, we're on the same page. I agree with our island home and the senior center, that being moved to uh, Schirmer Commons, if that can work out. I mean, a lot of things would have to be figured out, but I've never been for keeping our island home there. I just don't think you can build a facility that's needed while elders are there. I just, I don't know how that would ever work. Um, I wouldn't want my family member um, moved off island for a year because we're building something new. So um, I, I like that, whether it's senior center, I think one other thing is, um, you know, when I look at the kind of the, the bookends, our elder community and, you know, children, you know, slash families, uh, early care, you know, I don't know if it's the town's job to solve the early care problem, but there could be, you know, us providing facilities where an early care center could come in and help out um, families that have working families that have, you know, four months old to 2.9. Like that's the big area where, um, that's lacking. There's hundreds of families on a waiting list just for that. And so I, and I, I try to look at this and in, in, you could frame this a lot of different ways. And I looked at it as town operations, uh, children, family, elder community, and then our visitors and our, our economic lifeline, right? And that's kind of where the facilities and amenities come in. I don't think we do a good enough job of keeping our facilities up um, like Matt really pushed over the years to try to find a really good kind of economic system to where, you know, there could be a revenue sharing and, and hopefully that money would go back into it. But I mean, the, the bathrooms at, um, I just think we need more bathrooms. We need them downtown. We need them at Children's Beach. We need better bathrooms. It's, it sounds like such a frivolous thing, but it's, it's important to visitors. It's, it's important to our, you know, me being a new father, like bathrooms are really important. I never really thought about it, you know. Five, five years ago, um, that's something that really needs to be looked at. And if it's 800 square feet, $800 square foot, then, then we have to do it. I mean, it's, I, I think that's important. Um, to answer some of your questions, amenities, what I think people are looking for, some of it's already in our strategic plan is safe pathways, it's safe sidewalks for visitors in the year, year round community, safe bike paths. Uh, connectors. We're, we're getting there. It's starting, but I think Pleasant Street is a, you know, Pleasant, Orange, and Sparks are, are, are really serious major connectors that I think will help visitors and our year-round community. I love doing the double whammies where you can get the year-round community and visitors both benefiting from, you know, a major capital improvement, which is what all these would be. Um, I think, I think Matt was on the right, you know, I, I couldn't keep up with everything you said, Matt, but I agreed with, with a lot of things that you were saying. Uh, employee housing, all housing should be moved uh, inward towards the mid island and, and there should be more of it, right? So existing housing, whether we pick it up and we put it somewhere else, uh, if that's feasible, but anything on Washington street, I agree. We can't just pick everything up and make parking lots out of them, but um housing can't be on, you know, in Washington Street in those areas. They need to be in Mid-Island. So we need new housing, which is part of the strategic plan. And also um, think of a plan to, to move our lifeguard housing, you know, away from Washington Street. Julia, you can ask me any questions if you want. I've got notes everywhere if I missed anything. Um, did you touch on the new amenities that um, the community might be looking to the town to build? 
Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, bike paths and sidewalks, bathrooms, and okay. um, really focusing on ADA compliance. Okay. We're really uh, putting a lot of our time into, or starting to put our time into DEI work. And I think um, people with disabilities is something that's, that, that gets kind of lost in all that. So I think, I think we do a good job, but I think we could, we could do it. We have a little more focus when we're, we're looking at our, our facilities. I mean, the sidewalks that have been built um, mm -hmm. are all kind of looking through that lens, which, which is great. But I don't want to lose sight of it. So uh, it's, I, it's so not, no, that's good. I, I just wanted to, you know, kind of taking into consideration public transportation and bike paths. In my head, we were so focused on address, address, addresses. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really thinking about the connection piece as it's as part of the facilities plan, but really more thinking about that maybe as part of the transportation planning that's going on, but, but you're connecting those two. So I just want to, we might, it might be something we want others to chime in on. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Then that makes sense. Uh, I, I just, I'm so involved with it. I see it as a facility, but I know it's, it's not really when you're, you know, when I'm looking at public services, amenities, those, those type of things, it, that's what pops in my head. Gotcha. I think overall, it's it's um it's a really tough balance that we have to take on of keeping the history and the legacy and the preservation and adapting to the needs today. And it needs to be convenient. Everything needs to have convenience. I mean, people will pay double of a taxi ride or anything because they can do it through their phone, right? Not, not that these facilities have to be looked through with the lens of a phone, but as we're building more things, it needs to be convenient for people. Okay. You coming up, buddy? Hello, hello. We got me with Matt. Just Matt, so Matt, you're on. You're on live there. <laughs> but we, you know, he can he can make an appearance. <laughs> I'm always always welcome for the furry friend family members to make appearances during meetings, though. <laughs> Okay, anything else then, Jason? I think you've, you know, you're touching on things where no one's really talking about other facilities too much. We'll, we'll go through each one after everyone has a chance to talk and just, and, and make sure we don't miss anything that way, okay? Uh, Dawn? Hi, yes, I, I agree with a lot of what's been said. Um, there's a few additional things I'd like, like to add um, is that, um, one big big item that I've heard a lot of is indoor recreational space that's open to the whole community. I mean, people call it community center, um, but I think it's actually more of what people are looking for are into in, indoor recreational spaces like um, bubbled tennis courts and indoor track, things that um, can keep the island happy and healthy in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's a big kind of calling for that. And I, I mean, I don't think it's something that we would necessarily build, but it might be a public private partnership or some kind of a nonprofit's formed and we make land available. Um, I think there's also the possibility of adding maybe an additional concession to the nobody or farm area or, may, or maybe doing some additional um, work on the concession at the Delta Fields that's really just used for Little League games right now. I think we could, could make more, more use of something like that that would be more um, in a central area where lots of people are gathering to play sports. Um, I love the idea of doing a concession out in Tom Nevers. Um, I agree that we should, any new concessions that are like hot dog stand type things should be very much family friendly and not, not at all focused on the service of alcohol. Um, let's see, I, I support building a new island home off site. Um, I think that Sherburn Commons makes a lot of sense since it's land that's available to us and there are some shared services that could could work there. I think we, we've come up with a decent plan where it could be accessed off of South Shore Road. There was a big concern about it being accessed off of Mayakama Road, which is very narrow and doesn't have a bike path or a sidewalk. Um, 
I think the new senior center would be fabulous at the current island home site. I, I'm not sure that we can renovate that building. I think it's probably going to eventually have to be a total rebuild because of it's gonna to need to be raised up. Um, and there's so many um, systems issues, but, um, but certainly willing to look at all of that. I think that whatever does go there should have some parts of it that can be used um, by the whole community and whether it's event space or meeting space or maybe some, some of the two so that it's primarily for seniors but available to everyone at certain times. Um, I, I do think we I know that real estate is so valuable and we hate to give it up to parking but I do think we need some expansion of our satellite lots downtown. Um, I, I, I think that moving that house off of 39 is a is a maybe a viable option or just building new housing and Tacoma, at, um, Tacoma Way Drive um, and centra centralizing a lot of those seasonal employees. Um, Julie, you want to run through any questions with me? I'm just making sure when you said 39, you're talking about 39 Washington Street. Washington Street. And there's one um, one all the way at the end. Too. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That may, may be good to keep to keep that one um, for storage at least, but I'm not sure. So you mentioned the the moving the island home, maybe doing a senior center, but you the new thing that you've mentioned that others hadn't, and I, I will say that in my in the notes that I had asked for um, um, it was suggested also a community center, an indoor recreation facility. Not sure what the town's role is there, but that's something that other people have mentioned and you're you're hearing that from the community as well. So you've mentioned that. Yeah, the proposal that we have, I'm sorry, I did not do any of my homework and send it to you, but um, the proposal we have um, with the land bank for a swap where they would um, take ownership of Mill Hill Park and we would take ownership of the Nobody or Playing Fields does have an undeveloped piece that might be a possible site for indoor recreation that's something they're not they're not allowed to do but we could be um in a i do look at it as an possibly an opportunity for a partnership with a nonprofit that would actually build it and run it yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I do agree with Jason on the ch um, child care is an issue on the island, the availability of it. I'm not sure exactly what the town's role would, would be in that, but I, I think it's a very important conversation to have. I also think that as we're talking about affordable housing, that we need to look at, which we do have this right now, we have three facilities that are dedicated to people over 55. I think we need more of it. Um, there's there's a big demand for people who want to downsize, um, and um, I th I would say that most of those units are all full, and and it's at man many different income levels. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to ask Libby to also kind of share her thoughts as, as she's processed um, this as well. And then we're going to go through the rest of the slides, which kind of hit on the addresses, just so we make sure we don't miss anything that somebody might have mentioned if we had jogged their memory right. Um, there is going to be an opportunity for public input at the end of this meeting. I do have one person who's asked me about that. So we'll make sure that you have that opportunity at the end. So thank you. Libby? Okay, I'm going to go through each item that is in front of me, which is pretty much pretty much follows the memo okay. items, and I I'm going to just just sort of uh, freelance here. Okay, For, so, style. What's it called when you kind of? Yeah, uh, it's so I never get that word right, but I, I was going to say a different free word, but I you, you know what I mean. Um, so public services in our island home, we've had obviously years of discussion about this at this point, and I think most recently we have started trying to narrow down what we are going to do there. I think that the study we did to look at what it would take to build a new island home, basically at the current island home site was prohibitively expensive. And the focus has been shifted a bit to what could be done at Sherburne Commons. 
So as far as I can tell, that is where we're looking right now. We have stakeholder meetings that are ongoing about that at the current time. We definitely need to get some neighborhood input on this, but we need to start moving forward because the existing facility needs to be dealt with. The senior center has been an issue, of, of course, and I agree with some of what uh, the board members have said that repurposing the island home site for a senior center, which could potentially be a community center, have a community center aspect to it, as well as potential housing. It's a big enough site that it could possibly even have some indoor recreational types of um, services. That, that all could be studied. There's a lot of opportunity at that site, but I think at some point at the board needs to um, reiterate that there is no intent, at least with this board, um, to sell that property. People sort of get concerned about that, but I think that's not in the cards. As far as amenities go, I agree, we need more and better bathrooms. Um, as far as more goes, I'm not really sure where we would put them, but there may be opportunities, for example, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm freelancing here a bit and I haven't thought every little item through, although I have given a lot of thought to this over the years, but um, to, to be further thought out, downtown at the visitor services center, if, you know, a lot of, a lot of the discussion here is sort of, if we do this, then we can do this and that leads to that. So, and if, but if we didn't do this, then we can't do that. Or, you know, there's, there's lots of moving parts, I guess is the way to put it. So with respect to bathrooms downtown, if we were able to remove the building that the health department is in right now, we could potentially expand the visitor services area and have more and better bathrooms there. Again, I'm not totally sure where downtown they should be. We do have a couple of issues in the downtown area the Dreamland, for example, is supposed to have public bathrooms open and accessible to the public pursuant to their Chapter 91 license. Totally understand that COVID has shut those down for now, but those need to open back up again as, as soon as it's safe. And that is, you know, places like that need to supplement the, those types of facilities in the downtown area. Some of the out of town these, these comfort station or, or bathhouse areas um, need work for sure. And some of that is in existing plans like the park and rec master plan. So that's just some thoughts about those types of amenities. The concession buildings, these need possibly their own workshop. And that may be, we may be having a series of workshops here that invite public input as well as board discussion and comments and just sort of some brainstorming about this. In, in, in order of how they're shown here, the Jetties concession, for example, I hear, I hear different things uh, about Jetties, even from board members a, a little bit. It's too commercial. Well, it needs to be commercial. Um, it, it's gonna need work, that building, that buildings, and we're gonna need to either be prepared to fund that work, and there may be, you know, flood and mitigation, um, code issues that, that are needed there. That, that's going to be expensive. Surfside, similar types of things that that building could, could be better. Children's Beach is an ongoing issue and not to take up a lot of time on Children's Beach, but several years ago, we appropriated funds to, to improve that concession. The bids came in at a much higher number than we had an appropriation for. We then got an additional appropriation. And then uh, I might be mixing up the order here a little bit, but then determined that if we wanted to make the types of improvements that we were talking about, we would have to build the, bring the building up to code. There are bathroom issues there. And as a result of some of those issues, several years ago, again, we talked about what else could we do at Children's Beach? Could we not have a concession building? Could we have a plain old snack bar? Could we have food trucks? We actually had a public session about food trucks. Um, the, the neighbor reaction to that was um, fiery, I would say. And I still feel uh, a little bruised by that. But 
that food trucks are a thing and food trucks are coastal resiliency friendly, you might say, and that may be an option not to have to put a lot of money into a building that is probably in an area where it shouldn't be for the long term. The Washington Street um, sort of concession, there's no actual building there, so I'm not even going to go on about that one. Employee housing, we, we have an internal um, work group on housing, mostly focused on employee, but we do have some, some thoughts that we're trying to move forward a bit. And they're in no particular order. We're trying to figure out what a town employee housing policy could look like. Uh, it's not that common in other towns. So we're a little bit reinventing the wheel here. 38 Westchester has been a transitional house for ever since we bought it um, in around 1999-2000. And it could use work. It could also potentially be uh, different, you know, we could turn that into a duplex if we really wanted to. Um, so there, there's some options with that property. We could sell it and do something elsewhere. Although um, I sort of agree with Matt's house, scattered housing idea that is kind of necessary depending on the types of department heads that we want to you know, hire for different positions. The 39 Washington Street building, which is currently in uh, seasonal housing down, no, I'm sorry, I mixed up, 30, 39 Washington Street is seasonal housing. And the thinking there has been since day one to ultimately remove that building and expand the Washington Street parking lot. Um, the 47 Orkawa lifeguard housing seasonal, one of the things we've talked about there is, and here's, here's a situation where one thing leads to another, if we're able to construct seasonal housing at the fairground site, sufficient seasonal housing, we could remove the seasonal housing, excuse me, at Orkawa and have a mini, um, you know, two or three, maybe even single family houses for town department heads, potentially. So, so the potential for the 47 Orkawa property is there is good amount of potential there, provided we put seasonal housing elsewhere. 109 Washington is seasonal housing. It's a building not in great shape. It is used for, for off-season storage. Um, my thought had been at one point, maybe we sell that property because again, it's in an area that I don't think we wanna have a building there long-term because of sea level rise, but perhaps we continue it for storage until we don't anymore, but move seasonal housing elsewhere. The Low Beach Road Loran Barracks facility, I think we definitely want to keep that. A lot of work has been done on it, and it is a good location for seasonal housing. The Surfside Treatment Facility housing is meant for sewer employees year-round, and I think I don't, I'm, I'm not actually sure Tucker or Ken could maybe elaborate on this if there's a, the possibility of additional housing out there. Again, there is the potential for erosion, and I don't know how carried away we want to get with more housing there, but it seems to serve the purpose now. Other facilities, the Madiket Firehouse, um, other than some ongoing you know, maintenance work, I don't think we're doing too much with that facility. The Sconset Firehouse, we had appropriated funds a couple of years ago to look at what would it take, again, to have a ho housing unit in there and potentially some kind of maybe additional staffing there seasonally, have, have a permanent firefighter or firefighters out there. There are issues with that and, and, and not only collective bargaining, bargaining, but other you know fire safety standard issues. So we actually, uh, Chief Murphy could speak to this if the board wants to hear more details or it could wait for a later time, but we have looked we have basically scoured Sconset for another location for a firehouse out there. There are a couple of possibilities we might be able to pursue, but um, nothing that jumped out as this is it. And of course there are neighbor issues in any, almost any situation. The 131 Pleasant Street property, the former fire station property, as we all can see, we're trying to place a, a trailer there for meeting space that's been in the works for over two years now. And we are working to do some improvements to that building so that we can move the health department and natural resources department in there. 
temporarily this was gone we went through this with the board again at least two years ago which fell apart with covid now it's hopefully getting to be back on track again and the long-term plan for that property would be i think what matt fee said dense housing with commercial space and that was kind of, i feel like that was kind of decided already the two bathing beach road as i just mentioned that's where natural resources is now that would move at least temporarily to 131 pleasant same with two chestnut, that is where the health department is now. As far as additional facilities go, um, the senior, the um, a lot of these ideas that have been mentioned need definitely more public input, feasibility analysis, cost review, that sort of thing. We we have heard the idea about an about an indoor rec center or a wait, some some sort of rec center or, or indoor sports complex that has some of the things that Don mentioned. And that can potentially be looked at. It, it could also be something smaller. It could also be something that we put out an RFP for. Um, hey, community, we want to have, again, with public input, this type of facility out there. Who wants to do it? We, we rent the space for uh, you know maybe a low amount of money or Maybe we do some kind of, that would be a good candidate for a feasibility study um, as to, is it feasible for a private group to run it in an affordable manner for the community? We don't need another private club, um, in my opinion. Um, a, an improved concession out there might be a, a good idea. Right now, we do have a field house underway. It did not include a concession. That it, uh, improving the one we have, well, you know, it's it's very rudimentary. The one we have out there, I'm not even sure I call it a concession, but um, that maybe that's a food truck candidate. I, I don't know, but little little things like that could be explored further. I've heard the idea of early childhood care, daycare, um, off and on over the years, and again, that might be something that I know that is desperately needed in the community, and that is something that perhaps we put out for an RFP and have somebody else run it. And um, having a municipally run daycare center is very expensive and there's an extreme amount of liability for that and a, a lot of oversight. So I just leave it at that. Um, let me see, what, what was something else I was gonna mention? Um, the black box theater, I don't think I've ever heard about before, um, but perhaps a variety of ideas could be explored. I, I don't really know where that would go. I'm not even totally sure I know what that is, but that could, along with other outdoor facilities for entertainment or gathering for the community um, could certainly be reviewed. A, a lot of this was, I, I feel like it was, it was um, the community was, was surveyed for a, a lot of these sort of enter, um, recreational types of things in the park and rec master plan. And so a lot, some of these ideas are already in an existing plan. So this is why I said at the beginning, we need to, when we're getting through this a little bit more, sync up some of those plans with the municipal facilities plan. I think those are most of the things that I wanted to mention. Um, Great. Just kind of looking through my notes here, but if I think of anything else, I'll just say it. Thank you for going through things specifically. Um, um, Matt, you've got a question and then I just want to welcome Melissa and we're gonna go to her next um, to let her chime hey, in. Just to follow up on a couple of things Libby said that made a lot of sense. I think one, and things I thought about just so we get them on, the, uh, on our notes. One place we do need bathrooms uh, seriously is in Mattaket. You know, we need to do something out there. That's been a mess. Uh, the, the idea of an indoor field space, I think, you know, that's something that has been talked about forever. Uh, it doesn't need to be the biggest, fanciest thing in the world. It doesn't need to be the fanciest thing in the world. It needs a, an empty space with AstroTurf that has sides on it. I mean, it can, it, and if we do too much and do too, you know, try to make, spend too much money, then you're spending all the money maintaining it. It just has to be something simple. Another thing that's been talked about is a community health center. Maybe that can be attached to that type of facility. Uh, that and they'd be used at different times that would be busier more through the day and the other thing would be busy at night it is viable you know you can have guys pay fifteen dollars an hour to play soccer it's that they're happy they're happy all winter the place would be full you could pay for the thing with just nighttime soccer uh 
the concessions real quick that uh, the the children's beach could easily be back to just a it should just be a, a snack bar hot dogs and snacks it doesn't have to and we don't have to spend you know and it can be that we can set out an rfp and make taking care of it the responsibility of the people who are who are bidding and you know and go back to that instead of you know what happens is these things morph into something different and then they say that's our responsibility. Oh, look, that's broken. Fix it. And I think we have to, you know, look at those slightly differently. And our concessions are doing a really good job, but we have to sort of, you know, keep it simple. Uh, it was one other thing. And the other part was, you know, if we could ever get a clamshell back, you know, so entertainment down by the wharf. We used to have a bandstand. It's now a bar. If we could actually get a a clamshell back that was a community area you know, in the course of our negotiations with NIR or with the, you know, the owners down there, that would be uh, something that people would be, it would be amazing. We have to think about what can we afford? You know, all this stuff is great, but then the reality, the reality hits you is how are you going to pay for it? So the things that, you know, that are back, have backing and have, uh, you know, sort of have an income stream, I think we could, you know, those should go a little bit more to the top of the line. But the community health, looking at what we're seeing now, a community health is really important. That's it. Okay, thanks, Matt. Melissa, welcome. Your opportunity to go through the various facilities and talk about your thoughts. Yeah, I, I don't have too many thoughts, but I will share with you what I've got. Okay. Um, I agree with Matt about the bathrooms in Madiket. Um, it's, a, it's a really important area. Um, and um, I had mentioned to Libby also the, the idea of indoor recreation. Um, I love the idea if we can find the space and put an RFP out for somebody to run it. That's a great idea. Um, I think, you know, buying land and um, building these commercial spaces is always going to be um, uh, an Achilles heel for our local entrepreneurs, especially for something that's probably not going to be, you could probably earn a lot of money, but it, it may not be overly profitable. Um, I love the creative thinking with children's beach. Um, the brief time I worked for the town was the time we were looking at some of those plans. And um, I really loved the idea of having the mobile food trucks um, there, we do have a lot of, um, a lot more competition with food down the road. Um, and, you know, I don't know how much of an offering we need to actually have there, but just remembering that the, you know, the patrons who are there are generally families with young children. So, um, they're going to need a bandaid sometimes, and, uh, they're going to need a hot dog. They're going to need chicken fingers, the ice cream, small things. Um, but I think that, you know, I, I, um, having some of those other amenities available for them is important. Um, and I think we've done a great job with the restroom trailer that, um, that eventually did end up going in there as somewhat of a compromise, I think. Um, I also love the idea of community health center. Right now, our drop-in center is essentially managed um, through the hospital. And um, there's a lot of need for meeting space for our recovery groups. Um, and, you know, being able to, to find that space would be important. I'm so curious because I hadn't heard anybody mention anything about a black box theater before. I'm, I'm curious what that idea is. But again, I came late, so I'm happy to, to catch up on that afterwards. Um, but we, we do have um, great theater space in town. So I'm, I'm just curious what the, what the purpose of the, a town black box would, would be. Um, like I, I said, I didn't have very much other than that. I do think, I agree with Libby that one of my concerns is that, and one of the questions we were asked as board members is what do we think the community wants? And, um, you know, I, I haven't heard from constituents about facilities master plan ideas. And I don't know how much this has been put in front of the public in terms of soliciting their opinions aside from that um, great park and rec survey that we did, which, which yielded a lot of really good information and results. So it's hard for me to say that any of my considerations are representative of 
constituents because I haven't heard from a lot about um, priorities or, or the vetting of these ideas. Matt, do you want to just, um, just so everybody uh, knows what you mean by black box, will you just mention this concept? No, the black box idea came from the Dreamland prior to our first uh, session. They are looking, they were and still probably are looking, maybe they aren't now with COVID, who knows, but they were looking for, uh, they run their theater program, but if they're running that, and it, it, it's very popular with the younger kids, but if they're running that, then they have to shut down uh, their movies and other the other programs that they count on for income. So they were they had someone who had offered to uh, build these, you know, some if they could find land, they would be able to get it built. They thought, you know, pre COVID. So really, the the thinking I think we should have is, can it be partnered with? Uh, you know, uh, with some other, air, can it be partner? Could it be, uh, could it be out sort of near where the fields are with the new school, with uh, strong wings? Is there anywhere along, you know, with, if we swap land from Mill Hill and sort of piggyback onto existing parking and existing utilities. And if they have someone that's willing, you know, to fund it, that would be something that would be great for the community. Basically black box theater, it's, you know, it, there's, they do theater, you do arts there. Uh, there may be a couple small screens. So times that that isn't happening, there's other movies going. It's just, a, you know, sort of more, you know, and, and after the summer, uh, it would be great if out there they could have drive-ins if we still, you know, for in an area that wasn't being used. And just, if we think about it and, and put it into the plant, into the mix, I think it could be a huge benefit for the town. And the Dreamland isn't making money. There are you know, that's there for our benefit and we're fortunate to have it. So if we could find a way to uh, sort of, you know, find something that works for them and for us, you know, for the year round community, it would be great. I put a definition of a black box theater in the chat just so people could see. Um, my daughter went to art school. So it's like, oh, here's a definition. <laughs> people haven't seen one before. Yeah, you go and look, go to prep school. They'll show you their black box. Everyone's all excited to show it off. So we're going to call on members of the public in a bit. Um, we've got to go through um, addresses. So I see someone uh, waving. So we will take public comment at the end of the meeting. So, all right. So what I'm going to do um, is ask uh, my colleague, Catherine, we're going to just go through each of the slides. We've captured your comments as best we could and make sure we're all on the same page. So again, we're walking out of here with a clear understanding of what you all are imagining at these different spaces and appreciate Libby kind of going through this very in, um, intentionally with us because that was helpful. <laughs> so thank you. So go ahead, Catherine, next. So these are the first two, let me just jump into the, so um, general comments here in terms of public services, what's been mentioned was maybe a need for daycare, um, but not sure what the town's role would be. Go ahead, you can go fast. Uh, okay, in terms of the specific addresses, so um, our island home, you, general, what we heard was, you know, move it to Sherburne Commons, um, might need, there's ongoing effort already to get some neighborhood input, and then at the existing facility, um, go ahead, is that where you would put the um, uh, senior center? So take what's at 81 Washington Street, build it at the our island home site. Okay, if we've missed anything or if anyone wants to add something, wave at me. Next one, jump into amenities. So we've got a couple of general comments. Everyone agrees we need more bathrooms, um, bike paths, and perhaps some expansion of parking just a recognition that some of the spaces need some work in terms of comfort stations and bathhouses. Yeah, um, and there weren't a lot of comments about kind of the specific places. So if anybody wants to add any to any of the addresses. Yeah, so these we didn't have specific comments on. I, I will add something if it's not too late. It's not. Okay, so Diona Beach is not, I mean, it's, Again, extremely basic. 
it could potentially use a little fixing up, but I don't know that we want to make it bigger or for lack of a better word, fancier than it is now. It does, it is, does have some limitations with um, its septic system and a well that is there. So those things are not going to change anytime soon without great expense. And I think it kind of does the job there. I, I, there may be, I can't recall exactly a food truck or a ice cream truck like thing that goes there from time to time. I don't know if anybody else knows about that, but so there is a, a little bit of that kind of thing that, that can happen there without, you know, a building for that sort of thing. Um, Diona, that, that particular spot has undergone a dune restoration project years ago, which which is starting to, you know, maybe erode a bit now. And so that is something to pay attention to. Okay, thank you. So then we had, again, we don't, there's not any specifics. We had 25 Federal Street, the comfort station there. The one at Tom Nevers, which a couple of people did mention at Tom Nevers, that this may be a place where you want to add additional concessions, but it sounded like that was maybe in the out years, kind of five, beyond five years even, I think is what I what I heard for a time frame. But certainly as you're doing master planning, you would want that, I think, noted. And then 34 Washington Street, nothing specific on those. All right, so we'll go to the amenities. So we've got four bathing beach. Okay, sorry, I forgot about the general one. Um, so, you know, one of the things that um, Matt mentioned that we ought to kind of stay within our lane in terms of the how people imagine the concessions originally don't get any fancier than that and don't encourage um, additional availability of alcohol. And I heard a couple of people echo that sentiment, I think, during um, the night, but there was the exception perhaps of something more at Tom Nevers. Um, Black Brooks Theater, so we've, we just had a little mini conversation around that. Um, and, you know, I, I just, you might make a note here that as you all think about this whole new category, really, of, of cultural amenities, you, you know, doing, having a good understanding of what exists already with your different nonprofits in the community could be really um, uh, useful. So what, you know, what kind of cultural spaces already exist and what, you know, what kind of, how can the town um, support that without, you know, creating something that might exist someplace else. Um, concessions around sports facilities. So we talked about that with ball fields and associated concessions and a new idea, the clamshell bandstand. Catherine, do we have the community center someplace else? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we do. Um, that's further down. We'll get to that one. I know it's been mentioned a couple of times. Yeah. All right, so then address by address, do we have anything on these? So nothing on Bathing Beach. Again, if you if you have a comment about these specifically, stop us. We'll go quickly through them. Um, but if you wanna add something, let us know. Um, Harbor View, this is something people talked about. And then 76 Washington, nothing, okay. All right, employee housing, so you know, this is one people seem to have a sense that the town needs to do this and take care of its employees. There should be some scattered um, and you got to deal with year round housing as well as um, seasonal housing for seasonal employees. Some type of a policy on town employee housing and Libby mentioned that the, there's a committee that's actually working on some of that. Okay, and then Matt said this is something maybe to have a big vision around going forward. All right. So then we have various spots um, where you have some housing. So and here's some options for 38 Westchester or Westchester, 39 Washington. This needs to be moved. Um, Orkawa, 
Let me mention something. This was the opportunity um, on Orca Wall was the one that if the seasonal housing is moved, there's the possibility of building a couple of single family homes here for uh, town department directors or something. Yes, something along those lines. Yeah. Okay. We we'll make sure we capture that. And then uh, 109 Washington Street, continue to use for storage, 54 Low Beach. So this one is, keep it, it's working well, works well for NPD, as does 81 South Shore, but there was a question about whether there might be room for additional housing there beyond the um, year-round housing for sewer employees. Okay, other facilities. I think that these were mostly not not talked about really. So um, 293 Madigan. Uh, I, th I don't think, I think it was actually Sconset that we looked at for housing and additional seasonal staffing, not Madigan. Okay. Got it, I'll fix that. Thank you. All right. 131 Pleasant, we'll just kind of keep going. So Sconset, that's what we'll add, 131 Pleasant. To Bathing Beach. All right, Natural Resources is there. And to East Chestnut. Okay, kind of how it's currently being used. And then additional facilities. So this was the, you know, kind of one and perhaps newer big big thing um, is an idea of community center and or recreation and maybe co-locating with some kind of a housing a health center. And the big question really is, you know, what's the town's role? You know, what's the need? What's the desire from, you know, the community? What are they looking for the town to provide? And is it something that you all feel like you have the resources um, to do. So, cause you know, building it's one thing and then there's staffing it and equipping it and taking care of it forever. So those are the, the things to consider. And I think that kind of captures it. So anybody on the board or Libby have anything before we allow the public to comment? I have two people that have indicated they would like to speak so far this evening. I don't have anything else right now. Okay, Don, um, it, it, it's uh, it's Mary and also Denise who have indicated that they wanted to speak. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mary raised her hand first. Is that correct? Yes. Mary Longacre. Thank you, Don. Um, the meetings that the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee has had uh, in those two items that might be of interest here have come up. One is the need for a uh, boat launch in Madiket to provide access to Tuckernuck. Uh, if Jackson's Point is uh, affected by sea level rise or storms, uh, they still need to get access to Tuckernuck. And part of that was the need for a parking lot where people going to Tuckernuck for multiple days could leave their cars and then retrieve them when they came back. Uh, so that might fit in with the need for bathrooms in a facility. The other thing that was mentioned in some of the meetings was boat launch facilities. Uh, it's not my area of expertise, but my understanding was that there are places that are used informally that may not be owned or sanctioned by the town uh, because there's such a need or simply because it's conveniently available. Um, and so that's something again to think about is uh, what the town is providing for boat launch facilities in particular when storms require that boats all be removed from the harbor. Um, and just as a general comment, in, in addition to that, you might make sure you're looking at the hazard mitigation plan to see if there are any facilities needs that are anticipated in that plan. Um, those were my comments, thank you. Thank you, Mary, those are very helpful. Um, Denise? Thanks, thanks, Dawn. My only comment was in respect to the black box because I actually am on the Dreamland board and everything Matt said was correct. And the additional piece of information is it would also be considered as an open air theater where you could have concerts, open air concerts. So five, 600 people on a lawn. And that was also part of the thinking uh, when Dreamland was discussing potentially expanding to this. So that was it. 
Thank you. Okay. I, I didn't see anyone else um, have their hand raised. So I think that is it for the public comment. We are going to get these notes back to you like we did from the meeting on the 17th. And we will be in communication um, with Libby and her team about what's next. But we've, you know, it's it's been nice kind of having these intentional conversations to make sure we, you know, understand where the board's coming from. And there's a lot of things that you all seem to share and have in common. So Matt, you waved. Do you have a comment? Yeah, I just, uh, uh, two things. Uh, it, it's been great. Not, to, <laughs> this has been a good thing to talk about. Looking forward than some of the other stuff we've had to deal with. And number two, just because I know I have known people that have done, you know, recreational buildings and other things. And I think we've got to remember to keep it all rustic and simple, keep the bathroom simple, keep the, you know, facilities simple, keep them inexpensive to operate. Uh, and if we do that, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, Dionys Beach like that is great. You know, the, if we do a Matikit, keep it simple. Maybe it's composting toilets. You know, we just keep, keep like they do in national parks. Plenty of people use them. Like there's a way to keep it simple and rustic and not, you know, we don't need to make everything she-she to the point where we can't keep up with it and we can't clean it and everything else. Uh, and I think, you know, say, so just, I think that would be a good thing to think about for all of this. We don't need, the, you know, we need this, we need it. We don't need it at the, you know, sort of pristine level. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so Don, I'll give it back to you. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you. Um, does anybody have any other comments before we adjourn? Hey, Don, it's Melissa. Okay. I just Sorry, to I couldn't see everybody. That's okay. I just wanted to add on to what Matt said. I, I agree with that sentiment about keeping um, certain aspects very simple. Um, and I also think, you know, again, we really need to look at some of these other plans and merge the objectives because I remember that from that, um, uh, you know, facilities plan, uh, park and rec facilities plan, there was a lot of really good information in that plan and a lot of really good need, I think, expressed by the community for healthy outlets. So as we're sort of talking about all of this, I think there's a couple of tracks. There's rehab and renovation of what currently exists. Um, there's looking at our housing, and then there's looking at the recreational opportunities, which may even be somewhat separate or merged with that other that other plan. I don't I don't know how they commingle, but there was a lot of really good information in there. Um, so. Thank you, Melissa. Oh, and I can make a motion to adjourn if you want me to, if nobody else has anything to say. Um, Second. Okay. Does, just before we, before I take that motion, is th there's a lot of staff members here. Was there any comment that anybody wanted to make? Okay. I'm seeing lots of head shape. Um, so I will take that motion to adjourn. It's going to be by a roll call vote in the order in which I see you. Matt Fee? Aye. Oh, now, Jason Bridges. Aye. Christy Farantella. Aye. Melissa Murphy. Aye. John Holgate. Aye. Thank you all. I, I think that this is really good to keep talking about about this and um making bigger picture plans moving forward instead of all this reactionary stuff that we've had to do this year. Mm -hmm. Have Thank a good you. day. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Julia. Bye, Julia. Bye, Catherine.